Hogwarts Castle, a 5-inch gauge locomotive. This is part 1. Examination of the engine and commencing disassembly. Instead of working at the steam workshop, the plan is that Simon brings engines to me. And this is a much better way of doing it really for a couple of reasons. One being that owing to pressure of work, regularly visiting the steam workshop all day on a Tuesday and Friday was a bit of a problem. But my main reason for leaving was this machinist who would insist on singing whilst I was trying to make a video. And I started to find myself cleaning my large Danish war axe more frequently than normal. And that's enough of plotting the murder of the machinist at the steam workshop, it's down to business now. The first part to be removed is the handrail that goes all the way around the locomotive across the front and down the sides. And after applying some WD-40 to the handrail, it pulled through the handrail stanchions very easily. When I looked in the smoke box, I found a couple of useful things. One was the crossbar, and this is even more useful. This is the smoke box dart. This part, called a dart, fits in the smoke box like this. The handles are unfortunately missing, I will have to make some more of those. But that part of the job is quite a way off. In this episode, I'm having a quick look at how it's put together, and so far so good, it is actually very well engineered. And even though the engine looks a little bit scruffy and a bit tired, it's actually in very good mechanical condition, which was quite a surprise. While I'm trying to figure out how to actually remove the cab, I'd just like to mention, my job on this project is to remove the boiler and the fittings from the top of the engine and take those back to the steam workshop, where they will be modified and painted there. After doing that, my main job will be to sort out the bottom part of the engine, the wheels, the connecting rods, the cylinders, etc., up to the top of the running boards. I'm going to add detail to the running boards and some dummy lubricators and make sure that it all works. And I'll be repainting the entire assembly as I go along. But before I can do that, it has to come apart, after which it will be cleaned and thoroughly degreased. Here's one of the injectors being removed. These are not what I expected. They're actually vertical injectors, and I don't normally see these on locomotives very much. They're usually fitted with the horizontal type. I'm quite pleased with the mechanical condition of this engine. The rods are not bad at all, there's some side movement, there has to be, but generally the bearing fits are quite good. If the coupling rod and big end bearings are too tight, then the suspension will not work correctly, and the engine's likely to derail, and it won't like going round corners too much either. Steam locomotives are always a bit of a mechanical anomaly. I've never really figured this out. On the early locomotives, they had ball joints, I think on the rocket, they had like a ball joint on the end of the connecting rods but later locomotives did away with this, and it's all down to bearing tolerance and clearance. And talking about clearance, I've just cleared out all the ashes from the ash pan. This is quite a good design. A flap opens on the bottom of the ash pan to drop the ashes, and then also the grate drops to drop the fire as well. I'm stalling really because I do need to remove this cab side, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. Someone's already started to dismantle this locomotive, whether it was done at the steam workshop, I don't know. But it's only partially dismantled. I have to finish the job, and I do notice that a lot of these bolts are much longer than they need to be. And sometimes it's a good idea to shear off the excess part of the bolt, and then you take out a much shorter bolt from the other end. I have to remove the running board valence, and here it is, it's removed. I hope that the rest of the parts on this locomotive are made to this standard. It's very good indeed. There are quite a lot of these long bolts to shear off before removing. I'll have a quick look at the cylinders. This is the mechanism that operates the drain cocks, and it seems to work okay. It's a bit on the loose side. I'll probably do something about that. But at least it works. And once again, all the bolts are miles too long. I don't like to see bolts left at this length. But then again, if you have a lot of them to fit and you bought bolts that are too long, which is what you would normally do anyway, because if your bolt is too short, you can't extend it, but if it's too long, at least you can cut it down. But just leaving them full length is a real pain for anyone, like myself, dismantling the engine. The design of this part of the engine is a bit weird, really. I would normally mount things like the reverser to the frames, but this reverser, along with the drain cock lever, is mounted to the floor. So what I'm having to do in this case is remove the reach rod and in this clip as you can see I've temporarily bolted it back together so I don't lose the part 
and all I have to do now is just slide out the floor complete with the screw reverser. The drain cock operating lever was also attached to the floor because the sequence in which this engine was put together allowed that to happen but now pulling it apart it's not quite as easy. And as usual the last bolt was the most difficult to get out. It's not fastened to anything it just wouldn't come out it was stuck in the hole but with a bit of persuasion finally the cab side came off. With the cab side now hovering in mid-air I'm trying to unhook the reversing lever. That's it, it's out of the way. And here's the cab side. As you can see, the engineering is really good. I'm about to remove some of the piping from the back head. But before I do that, I'm just checking what this white stuff is. And the good news is, it's not asbestos. It doesn't smell like asbestos, it doesn't taste like asbestos, and it doesn't feel like asbestos. It is a modern equivalent. So now I can continue the job safely, and I'm removing the pipes from the turret. The first pipe to go is one of the injector steam pipes. That wasn't too difficult. Now I'm removing the pressure gauge on the other side. And then it's time to lose the injector steam valve from the right hand side of the turret. To conclude this first episode, and just to save getting lots of really anal messages, yes I am aware that Hogwarts Castle is not a castle, it is a Hall class locomotive. And that is why I am currently modifying a 5 inch gauge Hall class locomotive which will look pretty much like the Hogwarts Castle or Hogwarts Express or whatever you want to call it. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.